Hey guys, welcome back to the online lecture of EST subject. So, what we have seen last time? Yes, we have seen last time, uh, we have started with chapter number 3 that is ecosystem and biodiversity. And at that time, I told you that uh, first we will learn all about ecosystem and then we'll move further towards biodiversity. So, today also we are going to complete few points of ecosystem, what we left so let's start today's lecture okay uh, moving ahead first tell me just recall what is ecosystem ecosystem it's nothing but uh, living things non-living things and the environment each and every part of uh, this nature they called as ecosystem so today let's see what we are going to see okay the next point is functions of ecosystem the functions of the ecosystems are as follows it regulates the essential ecological processes supports life systems and renders the stability of course its first function uh, what will be its first function to support life system and maintain the stability it is also responsible for the cycling of nutrients between biotic and abiotic components. See, um, nutrients are required by both biotic as well as abiotic components. Now, uh, you might ask how abiotic component they need uh, nutrients. Take an example of soil. Soil is a abiotic component but still soil should be nutrient so that we can get a good food. It maintains a balance among balance among the various trophic levels in the ecosystem. We will see next what is trophic levels. Then it cycles the minerals through the biosphere. The biotic components help in the synthesis of organic components that involves the exchange of energy. So these are the few basic functions of ecosystem. Then let's see next point. Now, energy flow in ecosystem or it, this can also be called as food chain. So, uh, can you see one diagram here, one image here? So, uh, who is the main source here? Can you guess? The main source is sun. And if you observe in the figure, uh, it starts with sun, grass, deer and then ends with uh, one of the wild animal wolf so again uh, is there any arrow goes back to the sun no so food chain starts always with sun or grass then ends with one particular end on one particular living thing so this is a food chain The order of living organisms in a community in which one organism consumes other and is itself consumed by another organism to transfer energy is called a food chain. Food chain is also defined as a chain of organisms existing in any natural community through which energy is transferred. So, so in uh, food chain, what is the main purpose of food chain? Energy transformation. Every living being, irrespective of their size and habitat, from the tiniest algae to giant blue whales, blue whales need food to survive. Food chain is structured differently for different species in different ecosystems. Each food chain is the vital pathway for energy and nutrients to follow through the ecosystem. Food chains were first introduced by the African Arab scientist and philosopher Al Zaitz in the 9th century and later popularized in a book published in 1927 by Charles Elton. Now, um, as I said just now, a food chain starts with plant. Of course, food chain starts with plant. But who is the main energy source for everyone, even for plants also? Of course, sun. A food chain starts with a producer such as plants. 
produces from form the basis of the food chains then there are consumers of many orders consumers are organisms that eat other organisms all organisms in a food chain except the first organism are consumers plants are called producer because they produce their own food through photosynthesis animals are called consumers because they depend on plants or other animals for food to get energy they need am i right in a certain food chain each organism gets energy from the one at the level below in a food chain there is a reliable energy transfer through each stage all the energy at one stage of the chain is not absorbed by the organism at the next stage this also happen in food chain during this biological process light energy is converted into chemical energy and is passed on through successive levels the flow of energy from a producer to a consumer and eventually to an apex predator or a detritivore is called the food chain dead and decaying matter along with the organic debris is broken down into its constituents by scavengers the reducers then absorbs this constituents after gaining the energy the reducers liberate molecules to the environment which can be utilized again by the producers so this is all about food chain now let's see what's next trophic levels in a food chain Trophic levers are different stages of feeding position in a food chain such as primary producers and the consumers of different types Trophic levels is nothing but what it's a feeding position in a food chain where are you exactly in feeding position Organisms in a food chain are categorized under different groups called trophic levels They are as follows first one first trophic level is producers producers otherwise called autotrophs prepare their food by themselves they form the first level of every food chain plants and one celled organism some types of bacteria algae etc come under the category of autotrophs virtually almost all autotrophs use a process called photosynthesis to prepare food then the second trophic level is consumers there are consumers who depend upon others for food primary consumers they are second trophic level primary consumers eat the producers they are called herbivores deer turtle and many types of birds are herbivores and the next one is of course secondary consumers they are third trophic level secondary consumers best at the third trophic level eat plants and herbivores they are both means they are carnivores and in a desert ecosystem a secondary consumers may be a snake that eats a mouse secondary consumers may eat animals bigger than they are Hmm some lions for example kill and eat buffalo of course see what is the size of lion and what is the size of buffalo but still lion eats buffalo the buffalo weighs twice as much as the lions do right now tertiary consumers see guys its pronunciation is tertiary not tertiary <laughs> those who belongs to my arti medium even i do a tertiary i was calling but it's not tertiary it's tertiary consumers tertiary consumers are animals eating other carnivores the secretory 
But in Africa and the king cobra specialize in killing and eating snakes but all snakes are carnivores the leopard seal eats mostly other carnivores mainly other seals squids and penguins all of which are again carnivores now and the last is decomposers you know what do you mean by decomposers right decomposers which don't always appear in the pictorial presentation of the food chain but play an important part in completing the food chain see we never show we never ever show decomposers in a food chain diagram but yes though they are very important part of food chain these organisms break down dead organic material and waste fungi and bacteria are the key decomposers in many ecosystems they use the chemical energy in dead matter and waste to fuel their metabolic processes other decomposers are detritivores understanding the food chain help us to know the feeding interrelationship and the interaction between an organism and the ecosystem it also enable us to know the mechanism of energy flow in an ecosystem so guys there might be a mcq like uh, which cons by which concept we understand there is a energy flow of course it's a food chain food chain mainly shows there is a transfer of energy from one organism into another now let's see next point now again uh, the second important point is food web see guys there is a small uh, difference between food chain and food web what uh, what is the difference uh, previously i said uh, while there was a image uh, arrow starts from sun grass deer and ends on wolf let's say wolf but there is no back arrow or a mismatch of arrows so uh, it's simple chain so it is called as food chain now what is food web in simple words food web is a network of interconnected food chains it comprises of all the food chains within a single ecosystem it helps in understanding that plants lie lay the foundation of all food chains now the simple one uh, the word web means network right food web can be defined as a network of interconnected food chains so as to form a number of feeding relationship among different organisms of a biotic community a food chain cannot stand isolated in an ecosystem the same food resource may be a part of more than one chain yes this there is a hundred more uh, possibility that one food resource can be a part of more than one food chain so this is possible when the resource is at the lower trophic level a food web comprises all the food chains in a single ecosystem it is essentially to know that each living thing in an ecosystem is a part of multiple food chain a single food chain is a single possible path that energy and nutrients may make while passing through the ecosystem all the interconnected and overlapping food chains in an ecosystem make up a food web food webs are significant tools in understanding that plants are the foundation of all ecosystem and food chains sustaining life by providing nourishment and oxygen needed for survival and reproduction the food web provides stability to the ecosystem the tertiary consumers are eaten by quaternary consumers for example a hawk that eats owl each food chain ends with a top predator an animal with no natural enemies such as an alligator hawk 
or popular uh, sorry polar bear so food web means it's a interconnected network of food chain different different food chains now ecological pyramid first uh, let's see understand what do you mean by ecological pyramid ecological pyramid refers to a geographical representation to show the number of or organisms biomass and the productivity at each trophic level it is also known as energy pyramid there are three types of pyramids and of course every ecological pyramid begin with producer and then with consumers there are three different types of this ecological pyramid pyramid of biomass pyramid of productivity pyramid of numbers so let's see one by one what do you mean by pyramid of biomass biomass is the amount of living or organic matter present in an organism this indicates the total mass of organism at each trophic level usually this type of pyramid is largest at the bottom and gets smaller going up but expectations expectations do exist typical units for a biomass pyramid could be grams per meter square or calories per meter square uh, there uh, there might be a mcq on based on this what is the unit of biomass pyramid so your answer should be grams per meter square or calories per meter square this idea is based on lindemann's 10% law which states that only about 10% of the energy in a trophic level will go towards creating biomass then pyramid of productivity the pyramid of productivity looks at the total amount of energy present at each trophic level as well as the loss of energy between trophic levels since this type of representation takes into account the fact that the majority of energy present at one trophic level will not be able for the next one it is more accurate than the other two pyramids and the last one is pyramid of numbers this shows the number of organisms in each trophic level without any consideration for their size it shows graphically the population of each level in a food chain so guys this is all about food chain and food web which are the parts of ecosystem now in next lecture we will see about entirely about bio biodiversity so uh, i am thinking to test on ecosystem first then i'll move towards biodiversity let's see what we can do so till now we have learned up to ecosystem so guys tata bye bye take care